we start by discussing some preliminaries. In this part of the course, we will often talk about derivatives, first-order derivatives, second-order derivatives. And let me remind you some of the related concepts. So let's say when we are talking about some function, some f of x, that has a real argument and uh, a real value also, we know that the derivative is usually denoted by f prime of x, right? And uh, we know how to compute the derivative for some at least simple functions. In this course, we will mostly talk about higher dimensional problems. So we'll have functions in the form f of x, where we have the argument in Rn, and we'll have a real value. So essentially, our function will depend on several variables. So you'll have x in Rn, OK? So uh, the analog of the first order derivative will be the gradient of f of x. So the gradient of f of x is denoted by Greek nabla f of x, and it is given by the vector of the first order derivatives of f. So we'll have d f of x over dx1 and so on, d f of x or dxn. So these are partial derivatives with respect to each variable. So, and of course, uh, this vector x of variables in Rn will be given by x1 through xn. All right, so let's consider some example, some arbitrary function. f of x is given by x1 squared plus 2x1, x2 plus 3x2 squared minus x1 minus x2. So this is a multivariable polynomial. So in this case, it's actually two-variable polynomial. The highest degree of any term is 2 here, so this is a quadratic polynomial of two variables, All right? So, and uh, if I want to compute the gradient of this function, it is given by the following. So first, we need to compute the first order derivative with respect to x1. So for the first term, it will be 2x1. For the second term, it will be 2x2. Then the derivative of this with respect to x1 is 0. And then minus x1. So the derivative will be minus 1, OK? So and I guess I went outside of the boundaries here, and I didn't notice that. So, uh, But uh, let's see. So we are talking about uh, minus x1 and minus x2 here, all right? So now, first order derivative with respect to x2 would be, for this part, it's 0. For this part, it's 2x1. And then for this part, it will be 6x2. And uh, again, for this, it's 0 and uh, minus 1. All right, so this is our gradient for this function. So now, how about higher order derivatives? Let's consider, for example, the second order derivative. In the case of one dimensional function, we'll just have f2 prime of x, right? So, but how about for the second case you're considering here, when function has n variables? So then in this case, we will actually talk about a matrix of the second order derivatives because, you know, for the first order derivatives, we have a vector. And then for each function in this vector, we can compute the first order derivative of this function with respect to each variable, so we, we can compute all the partial derivatives. So we'll have, say, n partial derivatives for the first one, n partial derivatives for the second one, and so on. So in this case, n is equal to 2. We only have two variables. So for our example here, the matrix will be of size 2 by 2. So for the second order derivative, this matrix that uh, will contain the second order derivatives, we call it the Hessian. So the Hessian of f of x, this is the matrix of the second order derivatives. In the case of two variables, this will be a 2 by 2 matrix. Here we'll have the second order derivative of f with respect to x1 twice. 
then the second order derivative of f with respect to x1, x2. Here we'll have d2f of x of dx2, dx1, and uh, d2f of x, dx2 squared. All right, so, and then we can easily compute this matrix of second order derivatives for our example function. To compute this entry, what we need to do is to take the first order derivative of this function here, of the first component of the gradient, right? If we take uh, the first order derivative with respect to x1, what we get will be just 2, okay? So when I take the derivative with respect to x2, I will also get 2. For this, I need to compute the derivative of this with respect to x1, which will also be 2. And finally, to compute d2 f of x over dx2 squared, I need to take the derivative of this with respect to x2, which is 6. Okay, so here we have the Hessian matrix, and we see that for this particular example, we have a constant Hessian matrix. But this is because we had the quadratic function. Okay, so for the quadratic function, when we take all the second order derivatives, they are constants. Okay, so but in general, let's say if I had a higher degree polynomial here, so let's say if I had x1 cubed here instead of x1 squared, then I would have 3x1 squared here, and um, I would have 6x1 instead of 2 here. So, and my Hessian would not be a constant, but it would be a function uh, that depends on x. All right, so, but in this special case, in the case of a quadratic function, it is actually a constant. Okay, so, and since we already started talking about quadratic functions, I want to discuss them in a little more detail here. All right. Usually we'll write quadratic functions in the form f of x is given by one half x transposed times q times x plus c transposed x. You could also have a constant here added, but for optimization we always uh, can ignore the constant in the objective. Also we have this coefficient of one half here, and I will explain why we use it a little later. Here, let's illustrate this on an example with just two variables again. Our x is equal to x1, x2. Then our matrix Q consists of four components here. Q11, Q12, Q21, Q22. And then the vector C is just a vector of two components, C1, C2. Okay, so, and with these notations, we can actually now write uh, what this function looks like. f of x is given by one half x transpose times q times x. So let's compute this actually. So you'll have one half x transpose will be x1, x2, then times q will be q11, q12, q21, q22, and then times x. Again, we have x1, x2 here. Let's multiply everything out. So we'll have, first we multiply the vector x1, x2 by the matrix Q. We'll get here 1 half, and then Q11, x1, plus Q21, x2. So this is the first component. Then the second component of this vector will be multiplying this row by the second column of the matrix, it will be Q12 X1 plus Q22 X2. This is multiplied by the vector X1 X2. And if we multiply this vector here by X1 X2, it means we need to multiply the first component by x1, the second component by x2, and add the results, right? So we'll have q11 x1 squared plus q21 x1 x2. For the second component multiplied by x2, we'll have q12 x1 x2 
and finally plus q22 x2 squared. All right, so as a result, the final form of this function is one half q11 x1 squared plus then look here we have q21 x1 x2 plus q12 x1 x2 and then this is multiplied by one half so then we'll have plus one half q12 plus q21 times x1 x2 and then finally we'll have plus one half q22 x2 squared okay so this is our quadratic function and uh, we see that these coefficients q12 and q21 are added together and divided by 2 in order to obtain the coefficient for x1 and x2. All right, so here we have, in this matrix, we have q12 here, q21 here. And in general, you know, we could start with the matrix Q where q12 is not equal to q21, meaning that the matrix Q is not symmetric. But we could always make that matrix symmetric by replacing both Q1, 2, and Q2, 1 with their average given here. And um, it would still give us the same result. Therefore, we can always assume that Q1, 2 is in fact equal to Q2, 1. So the assumption that we can always make is that Q is a symmetric matrix symmetric meaning that qij is equal to qji for all ij and again if let's say i was given a matrix like this which is not symmetric so let's say one two three four all right so i would replace it with the matrix which is given by one and then instead of two and three here i would write 2 plus 3 over 2. So 5 halves here, 5 halves here, and then I would get a symmetric matrix, and uh, for the quadratic form, which is x transpose times q times x, would be the same for this matrix q and this matrix q. Therefore, without loss of generality, we can actually assume that our matrix given here is symmetric. Okay, so this will be the assumption that we will always use for simplicity. Now, let's go back to our example of the quadratic function that we considered before, so which is this function here. Let's see how we represent it in the form f of x is equal to 1 half x transpose times q times x plus c transposed x. We have here f of x is given by this, so this is just the quadratic part, right? Then we need to add uh, the linear part, which is c1 x1 plus c2 x2. This corresponds to the c transpose times x part, okay? So this is called the linear term, and this is the quadratic term. So now let's look at this function here, f of x, and see how we can write down the matrix Q and the vector C in this case. For the term x1 squared, we have the coefficient 1 here, and 1 corresponds to 1 half q11. So 1 half q11 is equal to 1, which means that q11 is equal to 2. Okay? So then, we agreed also that instead of q12 and q21, we will write their average, which is given by 1 half q12 plus q21. This average is actually given by 2 here. All right, so we have this coefficient in the general form representation, and for our particular example, this coefficient is 2. So therefore, for both q12 and q21, we can write 2. And then for x2 square, the coefficient in the general representation is 1 half q22, and our specific coefficient here in our example is 3. So 1 half q22 is equal to 3, which means that q22 is 6. All right, so our matrix Q is actually 2, 2, 2, and 6. Okay, so now if we go back to the slide where we computed the Hessian of f of x, we can see that our matrix Q 
is exactly the Hessian of our function. Okay? So therefore, in this representation here, so when you write f of x is equal to 1 half x transpose times q times x, this matrix q here stands for the Hessian of our quadratic. Okay, so this is the matrix of our second order derivatives. All right, so and this actually explains why we are using this coefficient 1 half here. We just use it for convenience so that when we take the second order derivative of the quadratic function, this matrix Q gives us exactly the Hessian. Okay, so if we didn't write that 1 half, then the Hessian would be 2 times Q. So, but since we'll use the Hessian quite often, it's convenient to just have Q as the Hessian, just simplifies the notation a little bit. Okay, so that's why we put this 1 half here. So now for vector C, in our particular example, uh, we see that in the general representation we have C1x1 plus C2x2, and in our specific example we have minus x1 minus x2, which just tells you that C1 and C2 are both equal to negative 1. Okay, so this is our vector C. Quite often, instead of spelling out the quadratic function like this, we will just say that we are given a quadratic function f of x given by this expression here, where q is this matrix and c is this vector. All right? So the standard notation for a quadratic function is this one. All right? We know that for this quadratic function here, the Hessian of f of x is just given by the matrix Q. How about the first order derivative for this function? We can actually observe also very easily that the gradient of f of x is given by Q times x plus C. If we look at uh, this example here, you can see that you know, if I look at q times x, so you'll have 2 times x1 plus 2 times x2, and then plus c will be just, plus c1 will be minus 1. Okay, so we get exactly this component here. And then for the second component of this vector of the gradient, I'll have 2 times x1 plus 6 times x2 minus 1. Okay, obviously it corresponds to qx plus c. All right, so this is what we have here. So and now an easy way to actually remember this is um, relating this to the one-dimensional example. So if we just had a quadratic function in one dimension, so of uh, just a variable x, which is one half, instead of x transpose times q times x, you would just have q times x squared. So let's use small q here, q times x squared plus some c times x. All right, so where x is in R, so I assume that you just have a real argument, right? So then obviously, in this case, the first order derivative would be Q times X plus C, right? So and the second order derivative would be just Q. And this actually corresponds to what we saw here for the quadratic function, except for now here, instead of scalars, uh, you actually have matrix, a vector, and then a vector here, right? You can see this easy correspondence. So here the derivative is qx plus c, the gradient is qx plus c, here the second order derivative is q, and here we have the matrix of the Hessian is the matrix q.